Welcome to the show on WXRW 104.1. My name is Kyle, and joining me from sunny Los Angeles is my co-host, Christian. Before we begin, the show is brought to you in part by Pete's Pub on the corner of Brady Street and Arlington. Pete's Pub offers daily food specials, daily drink specials, weekly trivia, and much more. More information available at Pete'sPubOnBrady.com. Um, yeah, Chris, so we already started talking to our guests, but for our listeners... Uh, we can we can tell them now who we're talking to. So he's Wisconsin born and Wisconsin brewed singer songwriter. His newest album, She's Dead, can be found on all streaming platforms. He's performed all over Milwaukee at venues like the Pabst Theater, the Cactus Club, the Collectivo Backroom. You may know him from his indie skate rock music project, Social Sig. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Parker Schultz. What's up, Ooh, Parker? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, dude. So. <laughs> First off, so social sick. How did you get come up with the name? Like, I started smoking cigarettes so I could go outside and be social with my friends, and now I've been smoking for like a couple of years. So yeah. I, don't know if it, I don't know if it was a dang, if social sex are dangerous. Then, so how did you land on that name? Yeah, for sure. So, um, probably around like 2018, 2019, um, I was constantly looking for a band name or a project name, I guess, to in, in, incorporate like everything I'm trying to do with this project. Um, as you guys might know, I do the podcast too, and yeah. um, just want to use it more as like a brand kind of thing. So, um, me and my roommates, I lived in a college house with five other dudes, and right when we moved in around that time of like 2019, we um, I had bought like 200 pre-roll cigarette filters and then a uh-huh. big bag of tobacco. And we put it in our living room and we would all sit around when we had people over around a table, just like stuffing the tobacco into these little filters. Yeah. And we would call them social cigs. Uh, none of us had really smoked cigarettes seriously. We were yeah. like all smoking vapes and stuff, but the cigarette, uh, or like the, the we would just kind of call them social cigs because we were kind of in denial, like, oh, they're just like social, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, um, one day at work, I was, uh, my friend Ryan, uh, she worked with me and she came in and she's like, Oh, I had the craziest night last night. I was at Summerfest. I saw Young the Giant. And after the show, I smoked a social cig with Young the Giant. And at that moment, I was like, Oh, yep, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the name. So I immediately went to Instagram, Spotify, like Googled it, like tried to find if anyone was using it. And it was uh, it's all you all the boxes so yeah <laughs> yeah well congratulations on grabbing that one before anyone else did it is good um yeah but i was watching some of your music videos earlier and like i said i like your vibe i like the wolf shirts i like the footage that looks like it's was shot in the 90s like the animated dinosaurs smoking yeah. cigarettes yeah um there's got to be like there's definitely something like nostalgic about your music like that should be its own genre like nostalgic indie it's kind of like goth babe who i saw that you Ooh. follow you know you know who goth babe i is, love right? goth babe Huge yeah me and chris me and chris are too i've actually emailed back and forth with his manager about getting him on the show so uh, oh dude um oh man what's his name um griff is, is griff is, yeah yeah he inspires me to one day live in a van and then do the, like a huge tour and just kind of live off the grid. Yeah. Um, really cool dude, it seems. So, yeah, for sure. Is that one of your, would you say, as far as influences for social sick? Honestly, I don't listen too much of Goth Babe. I've heard yeah. his main songs a few times, but I just follow him as like a person. As so a person, he's pretty cool too. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I, yeah, it just says like him kind of, uh, just seeing what he's doing is really inspiring to me that like, damn, that's like, a way that you can do this <laughs> for sure so well, who would you say inspired you like growing up what got you really into music or when did you really get into music um i always say so i was in a band in high school i was the young cool. guy the group, my brother um he's about three grades older than me and uh-huh. then two other of his friends who became my friends we started a band and we were basically uh, a 1021 cover band to start so, like, very alternative rock, like cool. Weezer, The Violent Femmes, Green Day, Blink-182, um, th- just, like, listening to all that kind of music. We did a lot of those covers. Nice. Um, and we were together for a while, and I don't know, man, as far as, like, musical inspiration, I really think I take it subconsciously from a little bit of everything. Yeah. I would like to think. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, to name a few is more, I guess, like, I really love the Kooks. They're good. Uh, I saw them live. They were good. Taking Back Sunday. Yeah. yeah taking Back Sunday? Sunday? Yeah, Taking Back Sunday. Nice. Good pick. Um, I can name a whole bunch. And I grew up listening to a lot of Black Eyed Peas with my mom. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just a little bit of everything. And I guess, like, having that base of uh, the 1021 cover band, like, that's yeah. kind of how I build my songs as far as like the indie with the guitar. That's what I know how to play. And, um, yeah, just try to get that sound out. What do you think about Imagine Dragons? Is that like something that you try to aspire to, to do? Would you be happy if you had like <laughs> if their people career? Project you to Imagine Dragons? Like, would that yeah. be? I have nothing against Imagine Dragons, but <laughs> I haven't listened to any of their new stuff. I remember listening to their early stuff with, um, I guess, uh, oh, what's that, like, big, po- like, it's time to begin, or it's time. That's one of them, but. And a lot of, like, arena that anthems. That was so good, but now, I don't know about them, they kind of, yeah, I just don't keep it too in touch with a lot of, like, mainstream, mainstream bands, I guess. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're, uh. Wait, I was gonna, wait, 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 wait. sorry, wait, that was band you had, you guys got to open up for, uh. Plain White Tees, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> you opened up for Plain White Tees? Uh, my high school band, they came to our high school for a, a charity event, and uh-huh. we were probably one of the only bands. I grew up in West Bend, but we were like one of the only bands in the area, and we were yeah. playing shows like crazy, and um, they asked us to open <laughs> for the oh, high yeah, school. Cool. Asked us to open. <laughs> what, can you, uh, what can you tell me about the snacks at the West Bend school store? Oh my god, you saw that video, dude? <laughs> they're a slam, they're a slam. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was looking through your, uh, that's deep. your you YouTube got deep. channel. That was a, pre- that was pretty oh, good. I was god. impressed. That was pretty high quality for you guys were in high school then. Appreciate it. Yeah, I edited that all myself on my phone. I've always had a nick for, uh, for, uh, video editing. I was gonna go to college for that. Um, yeah. but changed my route to marketing and, um, it's more of a hobby still. I love video editing and chopping stuff up. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to play some of your music for the people. Uh, we're going to be playing a few throughout the hour. So uh, I'm thinking we can start out with Estabrook. Uh, now, we are going to add these post-show, so, like, we aren't listening to them right now, but we okay. got to do intros like we are. Sweet. So, Parker, uh, Parker, what can you tell me about Estabrook? Estabrook. Estabrook is... Uh well, the park up in Shorewood, but more specifically the uh, skate park up in Shorewood. Uh-huh. It is a DIY spot that is, it used to be a tennis court. It's right by the beer garden. Yeah. And uh, something magical about how, I think like it's probably around like 15, 20 years old, but they started to bring like wooden ramps there and they just kind of built it up to this whole DIY skate park. Yeah. And, like, I've always been skateboarding on and off growing up. And then when COVID hit, I was either going to get into rock climbing or skateboarding. So I felt like I needed to get back to something physical and, uh, cre- like, in a different outlet, I guess. And it's like, fuck it, I'm going to try to skateboard again. So I, like, started hanging out with uh, some friends who I knew skateboarded. And just start- I was going through a-, a breakup at the time. And Estabrook was just, like, a almost like therapy going there and just such a magical place and just the coolest people and it's like in the summer there's trees over it and like it's a very hidden gem i guess and i don't know just lots of love for us i feel like i that's good that's a good ass intro for this song yeah yeah Try to stay away 
Well, we're back. I mean, I already know that I like the song, so we can do the outro as if I'm, um, you know, we heard it and we all just jammed out because I do, I do <laughs> like that song. So, what, uh, what are some of your favorite at this point as far as your live shows? What songs are your favorite to perform? Ooh, looking at the set list sometimes, and if we have to do a shorter set, I'm just, I, it's so hard to cut one song because yeah. I look forward to playing most of every song. But one that sticks out, I guess, Raspberry Blue, which I think is one I, I sent you. Yeah. Um, Raspberry Blue is just so fun to play because, uh, just the energy with that song. And lately, now that it's been out, people know the words to it and it's even yeah. more fun. And uh, we do band introductions in the bridge, which is really great. And lately I've been having, like, inviting everyone in the crowd to, like, sit down or get really low during that bridge. And uh-huh. we kind of uh, build it up and everyone jumps around on the last chorus and the energy. I'm just screaming and it's just nice. so fun. Oh, yeah. And you, um, uh, when this is being played tomorrow night, you will, will have already performed but because, you know, we're going to be doing some time traveling, so this is going to be, you know, played tomorrow. But uh, at uh, so earlier tonight, technically, you played at the Cooperage. How did it go? Oh, absolutely. It went amazing. It was the best night. <laughs> Hell yeah. I hope, so, <laughs> hope I saw all of you there. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how long, Um, how many songs are you, is your set list right now, typically? Uh, right now, it's probably, I think, around eight or nine songs. For a 45 minute set, I think we're probably doing around 12 tomorrow night, or tonight, I should say. Yeah, you, oh, you did, you yeah. did 12 tonight. So, yeah. so do, you, do you do like your new album, or do you like just do a couple songs from that, or like all over the place? Cause that cheese head album, I'll be honest with you. Like, I've got about five, six songs like on my Spotify liked. Like, it's really, Oh, hell yeah. Thank but, you. Yeah, uh, From Afar Thank is definitely you. my favorite one. Uh, but I also like freezing. Oh but, fuck yeah! yeah from, <laughs> from, from, from afar, I don't know. Yeah, the first time I heard it, it sounded like a, uh, you know, something that you would hear on the radio, but awesome. In a good way. Not in an American. We're about. We're on the radio. We're about yeah. to hear it on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I have nothing against my songs being on the radio. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. As far as like the live shows, we do a little bit of mix of everything off uh, my three albums that um, are currently out. So. A little bit of mix of everything. Do you ever do a covers at all? Or yeah, we usually try to do like one cover. We're doing a tomorrow. We've done it before, but I bet you look good on the dance floor by Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. Nice, okay. That's a cool. good one. I feel like every band should have a at least one cover song every show. That's my personal thought. Covers are yeah. fun. I like, yeah, I just the like hearing what other bands can do, what they can come up with. There's a lot of good covers on YouTube. Definitely, definitely. So how did you, um, so you like put all your music, um, I mean, you play guitar, obviously, you sing. Do you play, do you play all, all instruments? Um, not, I mean, drums very poorly and bass pretty, I play bass guitar like a normal guitar, so. Yeah. Um, I would say probably just singing and guitar are my main things, but as far as like producing, like, uh, I've been able to use drum loops a lot for a lot of my songs, especially for right. the first two albums. On She Said, there were three songs that had Kai, our drummer, on there, and everything else was drum loops. And I've gotten really meticulous with like going into these drum loops and figuring out exactly what kind of fills I want and really tweaking yeah. them how I want. Um, and does that all translate pretty good to the live show? Then? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound pretty a little different. Kai has a unique groove to him and definitely puts his own flavor on things, but it gets pretty dang close. Oh, yeah. Is that you're saying he doesn't do it the way that it should sound, or yeah, I mean when it when we're doing it live, like I've no like uh, uh, conditions, I guess, or um, expectations for the songs to sound exactly like the recordings right. live. It's kind of a a fun. Uh, atmosphere about that hell yeah well maybe i'll have to go to your show tomorrow which already happened but um so what about so how did you end up finding all the people that are in like um your your live band with you yeah um kai i've known we lived kind of close to each other but we went to different high schools i didn't connect with him really i like knew of him growing up he's one of my best friend's cousins 
And then in college, when uh, I started playing some more shows, I knew he drummed, and he wasn't in a band, so I was messaging him. We jammed one time, and then we did a show, and then he's stuck ever since. And in between, like I'll have sometimes if he can't make a show, I'll uh, jam with a different drummer just for that show. But he's pretty much the main my main guy. And then um, bass guitar Isaac Rapinski, if you know him, he's a guitarist of Moonglow and very very involved in the Milwaukee music scene. Mm. He was playing bass uh, with Social Sig for a while, and then he just got too busy with teaching guitar and his own band and all of the other stuff. He's a jazz musician too, oh, uh, so I kind of was starting to look for like another bassist. Um, then this was probably around like almost a year ago now. Um, where Jacob Slade, who is a, a musician in Milwaukee, he's got his own project. He, um, we did a show together and I was talking with him and I was like, yeah, man, just kind of trying to find like a right person to play lead. And he's like, fuck it, man. Like I would love to jam with y'all. So he jammed with us a few practices. We did some shows and he stuck. And then when Isaac, uh, kind of made his decision, I was like, Hey, like no hard feelings if you are too busy. And he's like, yeah, man, I think I'm too busy. And, um, Jacob's really close friend Austin at the time uh, is a bassist and uh, he has his own music project shout out Blacktop um, he was super down so we uh, got all a together. lot of music projects out there yeah no, there's so many <laughs> so really fortunate for the guys to take time out of their own projects to yeah. help me out and join this one really and uh, we've been jamming ever since Chris what were you gonna say next yeah well yeah, I, was, I mean that was good. I guess now I'm going to add on to this, but, uh, you know, I would hate in a way for, for your Isaac friend, if you guys like ever reached like the success of Weezer, do you, do you know the story about, uh, I think he was the, uh, the basis, the original basis for Weezer. Like he left like right after the first album oh. he, <laughs> and he was like, I got to focus on this kid. And then obviously, oh, damn, that's bad easy. timing. <laughs> But um, oh, no, I, I wanted to go a little bit, little bit in the past. Uh, you said that uh, back in high school, uh, you met, um, you met Kai. What high school did you go to? I went to West Bend West. I actually okay. don't know if I met him in high school, but I knew of him just through my buddy Waldo. Okay, well, this is cousins. You went to West Bend West. Why didn't you go to West Bend East, which is connected to? <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. Oh, God. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I've explained this so many times. I think I've gotten a, to a good point of explaining it to people <laughs> now. But basically, for those who don't know, West Bend West and West Bend East are two high schools in one building. I think there's only, like, three of them in the nation. And we were one of them. And it's basically two high schools. Or, no, it's basically one high school, but with two different sports teams. Like, the way the building was split up was there's a west side and an east side, but I had classes with east teachers. I had classes with east kids. There's two cafeterias, two libraries, and one main office, which was... Could you just go to whatever cafeteria or library you wanted to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. With a pass, badass. I guess. But, um, yeah, it was fun. We played... I was in football, and I played against some of my best friends, like, during our homecoming game. And it would always be super competitive that whole, whole homecoming week. Right. Um, and it was just tradition. And to answer your question, I guess, um, my birthday is <laughs> how you decide if you go to West or East. It's what day your birthday lands on. So if you're even, you go to East. And if you're odd, you go to West. My to birthday West. is on August 10th. So I should go to East. But you follow the oldest sibling. So my brother, my older brother, had a odd birthday. So or has an odd birthday. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's like a bizarre just that is. setup, but it's cool. Do, do you remember scoring a touchdown against Singer? A little six yard run to the right side. It was a nice block. Whoever that lineman was, that was a great block by him. Did you see something? <laughs> Were you watching his old highlights? I was watching. I was watching. Oh some. my god, dude! You had a couple. Of, you had a couple like thirty-three yard like uh, receptions, like literally thirty. Oh, uh, dude! Do you see my? Do you see my huddle? Yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> did you, have some, you had some game out. G- good game out. Dude, there that was pretty Parker? good. I was thinking about playing college football for a while at like Oshkosh, even and yeah. Uh, I just got injured too much, and I just didn't love it as as heavy, I guess. So really fortunate I didn't play college sports, to be honest. Okay. So you have a after your show uh, tomorrow night. I mean, you're 
weekends are relatively booked. It looks like you got some other stuff coming up. I guess how far out are you looking to book stuff? I mean, are you trying to be on, get on like Summerfest this year? Like, what's the deal? Yeah, I've been working with the Talent Buyer Summerfest this year. Um, Dude, I hope you make it. I'm really, really trying to make Summerfest happen this year. Also, like, chill on the hill. Kind of for the summer, really focusing on uh, getting my foot in the door with, like, the Bayview Bash. I think that's in September, actually. But, like, Summer Solstice. Um, I mentioned chill on the hill. Like, all these other, like, festivals. Um, yeah. Kind of around, like, the... We, the, we just booked the uh, Kenosha Beachfront Festival, which sounds pretty fun. Yeah. And then I guess the big one right now is that we're headlining Turner Hall Ballroom August 25th. Cool. Nice. Congrats. Thank you. That's, that's a cool place to, to go see a show in general. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love that place. Yeah. Who have you uh, who have seen there? I've seen – I saw Still Woozy, which I'm not the biggest fan of Still Woozy. I just went with a group of friends. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, with the high yeah. – yeah. yeah, I was just saying yeah. Um, I think I saw Cherub there. That was a good Cherub. Show. Oh, that show yeah, I've seen them. A, <laughs> I've seen them a bunch of times. That usually like on <laughs> on some on some sort of drug. Uh, I've so, seen Whitney there. Uh, Whitney's good. I also saw the Channel Five screening there recently. That was pretty cool. The Andrew Callahan thing. Oh, he's in trouble now. I heard. I heard. Yeah. I haven't been keeping up with it, but I heard. He's a little handsy, I guess, was basically the gist of it. A little creepy, like feeding girls drinks. So he's kind of canceled yeah, right now. Was the screening good? The screening yeah, was good, though? Uh, well, no, I guess it was terrible not to let you say that. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. It was cool. They played Social like the does not. Social <laughs> Sig slash Parker does not approve of Andrew's you know, behavior in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I was trying to, like, find some, like, mean, nasty, dirty tweets of yours. I couldn't even find anything. Like, really? like, really? <laughs> yeah. a very nice image. Oh, God. Thank um, God. That's good to hear. <laughs> we, like, one of our guests, we just made up fake old tweets and said, hey, how can you, what do you think of this? Why'd you say this? That was with, uh, Tom, what was that? Tom, oh, with Tommy God. G, the guy that made the <laughs> Kia Boys documentary. So, oh, yeah, you did him too? That's sick. Yeah, he was actually, yeah. he's been on our show a couple times. That's super yeah. cool. Yeah. But, yeah. One of the tweets you had, uh, and, and this one, uh, this one's just kind of out there. How did it take you 15 years to watch, uh, No Country for Old Men? Did you just pause it a lot? What, what was the tweet? <laughs> 15 years to watch? Yeah, it. well, I mean, like, oh! you were- yeah, um, I guess I haven't seen that movie ever. I guess that makes sense. I guess that was it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was such a good movie, though. <laughs> it, it is a really good movie. Such Kyle, have you movie. seen that one? Yeah, I've seen No Country for Old Men. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know. You hey, don't, why would I lie about you guys? I'm just, the coin flip scene? The hotel room scene? Hello? Oh, yeah. He's just blasting people apart with the uh, the air gun. Yeah. yeah. That's honestly, he's such a... I don't even know what kind of killer to describe him as. Just, uh, he seems like so calm, cool, and collected the entire time, but... Psycho. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you... Uh, do you try to not get too fucked up before you perform, or have you played some shows where you're pretty having a good time? Um, I'm pretty good at pacing myself, honestly, but uh, yeah. some shows will be more like, um, I don't know, I'll be more, uh, <laughs> like, drink a little bit more than um, I, I maybe should. Usually, like, Linneman. Oh, no, nah, man, it's you're like the rock star. Fun. You can do what you want. <laughs> It's your show. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the show to answer the question. If it's like a bar show and we're going pretty late and everyone's going to be on the same vibe, I think it just happens naturally. Like tomorrow, we're going on last, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty. You're rough. the headliner tomorrow, yeah, as in happy. earlier tonight. Hell yeah, you crushed it. Yeah. How do you? Are you worried about the snow? The snowstorm tomorrow? Or are you saying there's no show? There's a snowstorm. I, I mean, didn't even know. It's I mean, it's Wisconsin. The people that want to come, they're going to come no matter what. Yeah, I say fuck it, but drive safe. Um, Hell yeah, got four wheel drive. <laughs> there you go. Um, what about as far as is it hard when you're like if you're like uh, crowd surfing and playing guitar and like people are like grabbing at you, but you're still singing and like some you have pictures <laughs> where you're like in the crowd. Like, do you still feel like you're crushing every line, or is it distracting when someone's like grabbing your butt or your leg or something like I- that? Usually, like, whenever I crowd surf, it never lasts more than, like, 15, 20 seconds. No one's ever dropped you, right? No one's ever dropped me, thank God, yet. 
But um, I don't know. I feel when I'm up there, I always come back down like, oh, my God, I was playing the entirely wrong chords. But I think everyone is so focused on the crowd surf that they're like, brains aren't actually thinking about the sound of the yeah. music it's kind of like more of in the moment kind of thing and um i don't know sometimes that sloppiness really adds to the show like even the fact that i still have my guitar plugged in and it's not wireless it just yeah. adds that like sense of danger to like like oh it could unplug but if it unplugs yeah. like i more so see like, that as or like, like some water could get on your guitar and there could be like an electrical fire or something like that. yeah like, my guitar is on fire while i'm and you're like surrendering the solo <laughs> that sounds That'd like awesome so um you said one of your one of your songs that has a really good a crowd pleaser was it raspberry blue you said that yep. one's a lot of fun to play live yep sure well, is what, what can you tell what can you tell us about raspberry blue besides i think if you got a fruit in the title of your song, I feel like that's a really good idea, like, lately. Or, like, yeah, Raspberry Beret, like, people. Watermelon Sugar. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, sure, there's good right. songs out there with fruit. <laughs> yeah. with fruit in. It's funny, because I, I now have uh, Yellow Weekends, Hot Red, and Raspberry Blue. I have the three primary colors, and I don't know oh, if the I get that, yeah. that, th- that theme going, but it just kind of happened with the way the lyrics came out. But um, I guess with that song... Uh, I don't know. I was going through like a really transitional period in my life, like graduating college, moving out of my college house into my own place and like just a really like uh, turbulent time in my life. So I was like writing it and figuring like I've got a nice September on my mind and just like really just uh, capturing that moment of turbulence, but also like knowing that there is hopefully a, a calm after the storm, so to speak. Coming down about an hour I feel a little bit more sour than before I've got to get in all my daylight Because I feel a little darker than before I think I'm cut into pieces And I'm sinking to the bottom of the flow I've got a lot of bottle only And I'm sipping and I'm dipping Oh, to be a little bit of blue What it means to be the rest of me I surrender in my sights I got a nice September on my mind Oh, oh.
you're crushing your intros for your songs, man. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> fuck yeah, Chris. Do you like Raspberry Blue? I did. I told that's one of the ones that's uh literally like the first. I want to say the first five on Cheesehead I have liked. Um, I thought that those were really good. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Are you constantly working on new music? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I think I'm just naturally. I just like. I'm really drawn to songwriting. I haven't been writing anything, uh, I guess, in the last few months that I'm like really loving, except for this last week. I started writing this one song, and I think I'm finally back in like a groove of things. Oh, you got, um, you got a hit on your hands? I think I got a hit on my hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! It's called Cats and Dogs. It's gonna be really sick. That's a good title, right off the bat. Chris, what do you think? Good title. Yeah, especially I like Cat Dog, the show, so that would, yeah. <laughs> right off the bat, you'd be like, I should check this song out. This song out. Definitely. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> do you, do you, you know, play, how, like, could you, could you, like, make a chord with your voice, you know? Like, are you that good? You know what I'm saying? Like, how you can match pitch and stuff. No. <laughs> e- I'm I'm working e- on it. E- uh, I'm really like self taught as far as a singer. I took some voice lessons like long years ago. Um but I'm really just self taught and I probably should uh take some lessons to be honest. I mean so, it's like you seem to be doing all right. Yeah. I think I, it's just like more so learning the correct way to sing though, yeah. you know, if like I end up doing like multiple shows in a week kind of thing. I don't wanna destroy my my vocal cords kind of thing yeah i know kyle and i we're we're avid karaokers yeah (laughs) what are your your go-to karaoke songs oh damn we got a lot of them we always do at a home by edwin sharp and the magnetic oh okay that's a crowd pleasing pleasing. um for me i don't know i like i like doing the phrase sometimes that's a it's a good, it's a good girl, girl getting. You found me, you found me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over my head, yeah. I'm pretty good at Kanye Runaway. I rap, Ooh, I do Kanye sure, and yeah. push part. It's something else. It's something yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Are you ever karaoke? I mean, you don't really have to do karaoke considering you can just go on stage and people will pay money to see you. Well, yeah, I feel like <laughs> karaoke is, as of lately, if I do karaoke with my friends, there's a more of a pressure now. <laughs> You have to be, like, the best. That's what everyone says, but I'm like, no. I don't know, I'm bashful. But um, I do uh, Where's the Love by Black Eyed Peas. Oh, yeah, you said you're big big time. I can rap that whole song. Nice. (laughs) Could you ever go up on, I mean, I don't know if any of your songs are probably not available on karaoke yet, but how would you feel about signing up for one of your own songs at a karaoke bar. Do you think that'd be a cool move on your part? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Honestly. I get shy yeah. about even showing people or if I'm like on a road trip with friends and my song comes on like shuffle, yeah. like my first oh. instinct is to skip it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do you like do you listen or you don't really like listening to yourself? Oh, I listen to myself. When you're, like, when you're like editing your shit, when I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or even like the stuff I have out, I'll listen to my my music to an absurd amount. Like I won't even post my Spotify rap because it's just it's like just your name, all of my shit. Yeah, <laughs> but if I'm with people, I I get shy and I don't know. It, it's good to be your own biggest fan. I feel like that you know. Yeah, yeah I, lo- I love the music I make. I kind of make music I want to hear. So. I, I mean, you. yeah, I would hope that you like, most people probably like the music that they're putting out there. It's just, it's the other people they got to worry about that, yeah. might not, that might not. Yeah. What about, um? I mean, obviously you have, um. you're not quite at the le- the level yet where, you know, you're complete living ro- the rock star lifestyle. I mean, obviously, would you say the goal is to just be able to make enough money from your music <laughs> to, to just do this, right? Would you say? Or do you have more um... besides that? I've been learning about the music industry more and more, of course, and um, I've always been kind of like, fuck a label, blah, blah, blah. I really don't have a whole lot of insight and education on like that experience of what that all looks like, but right. I'm not opposed to reading into it if an opportunity came my way, but I also want to um, really make sure I have the freedom to songwrite freely and make sure that I don't get into any deals where like I can't release my own art into the world. Um, 
But living off of like different aspects of like social city, I mentioned more, mentioned it before as more as like a brand. So like I got the podcast. It'd be sweet to do like more、uh, get more advertisements on there, and eventually like maybe living in a van and like traveling and doing interviews with people, but、yeah. also playing shows,、um, selling merch,、uh, just different like I don't know. I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket. I、yeah. guess the lifestyle basically.、Uh, Yeah, I mean, like, also as like as far as music goes, like right now, I would love to be a、uh, an opener, like a, do a B tour along with like a headliner tour artist that's kind of similar to me, and just kind of like like hitch along with their tour、yeah. for a few days or what, whatever it looks like. But、uh, being like a, a small name on a big festival、um, consistently and having like a small, like I don't want to be like huge, like sellout kind of like arenas or anything, but I want to be like. Have my own niche of really awesome fans and community, and kind of、yeah. hopefully it stays at like a really、sure. cool spot. How many people are you expecting tomorrow? They they texted yesterday saying there was a one twenty ticket sold.、Um, I think today there's probably I think we we should have hit two hundred today. So I think with walk-ins and everything, we're gonna get close to. Maybe three hundred, and maybe、um, I don't know. It'll be it'll be a packed house for sure. Nice to go. Cooper just a big place.、Uh, it's fun. Least amount of people you've ever played in front of. What was what was it? What was the least amount of people you've ever played in front of? Ah, that's a good question. I mean, I guess at some like, point it was huge. Yeah, just playing in front of himself. It's always like yeah. I mean, me personally, like I would hate to like. I mean, like karaoke. Like this is I'm, you know, making comparisons, but like there's like three people in there. It's like I don't even want to sing. I don't even want to be here anymore.、Anyway. Yeah, you're kind of doing it for yourself like, at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you played?、Out. Have you played some like fairs or something like that where nobody's paying attention to you? Um, in my first band, for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess like. Yeah, we did some like graduation parties and stuff where it was just、oh, a bunch、yeah. of like kids, even my age, and like no one really knew the etiquette on how to like act、right. at a live concert show, and neither did I really, honestly. We、right. were just kind of playing like background stuff, and、um, but as far as like social side goes, I think I really, really do my best to trying to get people to sh- the shows. So it's been it's been good. Were you at the、uh, the Washington County Fair on July twenty fourth, twenty ten, to see Jefferson, <laughs> Jefferson, Jefferson Starship? They had a they had a they were the headliner that year. Oh, gotcha. I was not, but I was I was probably I used to live like right over there.、Yeah. You ever go to Jumbos? Yeah, <laughs> I've been there. I used to play I used to play、Jumbos. some baseball tournaments in West Bend. Oh, sure. Was it like the Gale Corporation or Gale? Gale, Gale. Yep. yep. Oh, right over there. Yeah, have you、yeah. been to the two cans? Two cans?、Okay. I don't know, man. I was、oh, like,、okay. that's, 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 <laughs> that's like an ice cream place. Went to West Bend at all? <laughs> sure. Oh, that was literally it. Jumbo's <laughs> is like a. I heard that a guy who used to be pretty high up in cops left and started Jumbo's, and it's kind of like a Jumbo or a cops ripoff. It's、oh. good.、Though. I like Jumbo's. Nice. I've heard like the the bread. People aren't happy about the buns at cops now. I don't know. There was something、It、online about.、Up. Yeah, they're, thick, they're thicker. Yeah, do you do where like where are your haunts in Milwaukee? Like, where do you like to go eat? Where do you like to go drink? Or for sure,、uh, I mean, I'm pretty homebodied in winter, but as far as summer, I like to go to Mad Planet a lot.、Um, let's say if I'm on Brady Street, I'll hit Garage up every now and then, but it gets different every time I go. It's like the crowd、yeah. just gets. Younger and younger, even though I'm not that old. But、um, <laughs> Brady Street, I would say Saint Mibianus has been really fun. Yeah.、Um, trying to get out more though. I really like、uh, as far as food. Oh man, I usually have some on deck, but Easy Tiger. I really like the ramen. Ooh, Easy Tiger is good. Yeah. yeah. I get the same thing every time. <laughs> Man, yeah, well, nothing wrong. Like once you figure out something you like, just going with it. Like consistency I, doesn't need to be frowned upon in today's society. That is very true because you know it works. <laughs> exactly. It works. What about uh? So your podcast? I mean, I was looking through. Looks like you have a lot of people in the music scene or the art scene. Just uh, 
in the city. So uh, how long have you been doing that for? Technically, I started, I would say, I think June of this last year. Um, and I've always had aspirations to start my own podcast and yeah. finally made the leap. It was kind of slow and steady all summer. And then as like, I guess this last winter or no, this last fall, I got the microphone set up and got a good like editing thing, uh, going on and, uh, been trying to have at least two guests on a week, uh, or at most two guests a week. Uh, usually it's just one person a week. Yeah. Sure. I take it you're going to invite me and Chris on eventually, sooner or later. Let's do it. Let's do it. What That's about, um, oh, I can Please. actually answer your question. Uh, the, the people that wrote, um, like the McDonald's theme, it was, uh, it was Pharrell. Yeah, they had, uh, Justin Timberlake, like, yeah, someone a- said Justin Timberlake. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Cash. Who oh, are what? some, of, Sorry, who are yeah. some of your favorite musicians in the city besides yourself, obviously? Dude, so many. Well, I have to shout out Jacob Slade and Austin of Blacktop. Um, they have a kind of like more indie folk, more relaxed coffee house vibes, I would say. Yeah. Um, man, just so many. First ones that come to mind are like Diet Light, Bug Moment, Scam Likely, Fellow Kinsmen. Um, Jesus Christ, North Warren, Spoy. I could just keep rattling off. Dude, you should. Honestly, I was I was taking these down because we're trying to come up with more Milwaukee Milwaukee artists to have on our Dude, show. Dude, I, I literally I literally have a spreadsheet of Milwaukee bands that I could send your way. I mean, just send me the. You don't have to. You don't have to just send, <laughs> tell me the ones you like the most. You can do that off air. As far as giving me like the top targets to go after. Oh, you don't for have sure, to, like, for sure. You don't have to rate your ba- your favorite Milwaukee bands. I'll, I mean. Obviously, you gotta put yourself. Oh no! One. I, I just have I just have a spreadsheet of like bands you could hit up with their information because when people hit me up for a show and I can't do it, I just send them also like the spreadsheet of the band that they can maybe get a bill together. Oh, that's, that's my sheet. Yeah. yeah. So, who would you say? Um, I know you played in Madison. You played in Chicago. Is that? I mean, is that pretty much as far as you've gotten out, like regionally? We did a show in St. Paul a few weeks oh, cool. ago, and then we also did a show in Denver in October. That Sick. was sweet. Um, and then, uh, yeah, as far as regionally, yeah, more so just doing Midwest stuff on weekends. Nice. Yeah. Know, we typically don't have, like, a younger, you know, listening population, so I don't feel bad about asking this, but, like, how did you find out that, like, Santa Claus was fake? That's a good question. Honestly, for me, it wasn't. Uh, I don't know. You, maybe you know I this, right? That. I have no idea, but you know. <laughs> I think I just got older and smarter, and I had yeah, an older just... brother, and I think just like just realizing slowly but surely, and I kind of like yeah. I wasn't too critical. Like about critical it. thinking about the things that don't add up is how it would be possible, right? And like when we would be opening some presents, and they'd be from Santa. My mom and dad would always kind of smirk and make some comments to each other. Yeah, and like I'd they're, kind of like they're read, getting, getting a, pulling a fast one. I can, yeah, I can like kind of read them more. I'm like, oh, something's up. I don't really know. If- <laughs> this, this little asshole thinks Santa Claus is real. <laughs> Man, that was kind of like for me when I found out wrestling it was fake. It was when I realized when I got, like, dish tv and like you could read the description of, like, what's going to happen on tonight's episode. It's like, how the fuck do they know that if it's if it's real? <laughs> like, damn! Wait a minute. <laughs> Shit sucks, man. Growing growing old is not fun. What yeah. do you miss the most? What do you miss the most about your childhood? Ooh. First or like your adolescence, just pre the, eight, like uh, say before eighteen years old. Oh, I would say my neighborhood growing up. Maybe when I was uh, real young. Yeah. Specifically, my trampoline. I would say my trampoline. Oh, so many members. I had a trampoline too. <laughs> Trampolines are fucking sick. Uh, like, yeah. Chris, you ever been on one? Yeah, I've been on one. I didn't have one. I actually got stitches off a trampoline at, oh, a, oh, at a jump oh, house. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I was like playing basketball and I was going up for a dunk and I was trying to Vince Carter the jump up, house? Like, in the rim and I jumped up and I hit my head. I come down oh, oh. and like there's nothing but warm and I, I like like yeah. put my hand in my head. There's blood everywhere. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. You ever hurt yourself at all? Not in like a bad way, but like in a, well, you know, like accidentally injure yourself in a humorous way. Oh, me? Um, I injured myself snowboarding one time. That was actually pretty fucking crazy for me. (laughs) I was snowboarding. I was wearing a helmet. I always wear helmet snowboarding and I was like 12 years old and I was hitting a rail and then I tried to do a board slide and I caught my front edge and just landed face first onto the ice. And then I remember like getting up and like a bunch of people were around me like, um, just like kind of making sure I was okay. And I just get up and like just ride away and just keep riding. And then that whole next week I had the worst headaches ever in my life. And then I went back snowboarding the next week and I thought I was going to like pass out and puke everywhere. Obviously I had a concussion, but I saw a guy who was there the week prior when he, when I was on the ground and he's like, dude, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And he's like, when you were on the ground, you were passed out for like two minutes with your eyes rolled back and your your body was like shaking and i was like i was gonna say were you having like a seizure too yeah i I I guess so no one fucking (laughs) out (laughs) yeah i just kept riding it's like what the fuck y'all but so you, you said you were about 12 years old when that happened yeah what like what year was that i'm getting somewhere with this 2011 Okay, so this was a uh, was this basically when you were working at uh, Mountain Outfitters and all that? <laughs> yeah, because on your LinkedIn it says you started. Oh in, like, yeah, 11, 2012. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how you. Oh, got absolutely. I mean, years old. It's a family shop, so okay. I feel like I was working there even way before that. But like, I think as like a good estimate yeah. of when I officially kind of started, probably around then. All right, I don't have to take your word for it. It's, it's not many days you just see a 12-year-old working at a... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the family did. I thought you were going to say the thing you missed the most from your childhood is the prices at the West Bend school store. <laughs> hey, those prices are a slam. You can't, you can't deny those prices. But... No, you really, you totally can't. So, um, what's, uh, what would you say your favorite venue that you play that is? I know you were saying that the Turner Hall, you, or you were about to play there. Favorite venue I've played at recently has been the Collectivo Backroom, for yeah. sure. Those shows have been absolutely bonkers, and um, the Pap Studio Group is so great. And the, also Cactus Club, the last two shows we did there were sold out, and just the, the vibes at Cactus Club are just so awesome, too. And just the energy in that smaller back room is just so fucking wild so yeah it's do you fun. see about a lot of the shows in the in the city do you see a lot of the same people and them or are they constantly like new faces like uh just around and about like in milwaukee like at your shows like do you have a lot oh. of people that you've been going to all your shows for a long time or are you always get new see new faces in the crowd or a mixture of both a little mixture of both definitely a lot more faces I I couldn't put a name to, but maybe I saw them online. Like I usually just like follow everyone back on Instagram specifically. Yeah. Um, I do I do mute people if I don't know them, know them just for my own sanity right. and uh, newsfeed. But I like to kind of have that like connection that way. I'm not. I used to be really like a stickler about the the ratio and all that jazz, but I don't, yeah. So um, you look cool. Yeah, you got to make sure you look cool, like numbers yeah. wise. Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. But also, I've found that if you follow people back, and then your name will pop up more often if you see someone you don't follow. Like, so say you see someone that you don't follow, and you go to their yeah. page, it's likely that my name will pop up if you follow me. That like we follow each other. I don't know. It's just like <laughs> no, kind I, of I a, a big it's game. Al- it's something game. with the algorithm. Yeah. Have you ever gotten the thing like where you follow, where someone says like follow me and like I'll follow you back and like you follow each other and then they unfollow you like the next day. Oh, I'm sure I have. That happened to me. That happened to me a couple months ago. And I was yeah. just like <laughs> why like why like why <laughs> like why even follow me just to get a follower? And did I, they message I, I you to like, tell you to follow them? them? No. But, but did yeah. they message you to tell like did they was it a conversation that was had? Are you sure it wasn't like a bot, dude? Because they're out yeah. there. <laughs> I met them. I met you them. You can usually kids. tell if it's a bot oh. or not, man. Face to face. See, a, now, you, now you have a weird interaction with that person. 
And uh, <laughs> I think that could have been resolved if he just followed you. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Do you have a cool. does like social we, seg have groupies yet? Um, I wouldn't say groupies. I would say fans. <laughs> Are there any? I don't know. What is define a groupie? I guess. Well, I think you know what a groupie is, Parker. Throwing, up, throwing <laughs> underwear at your face while you're ripping out a solo. Uh, my girlfriend's my number one groupie. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does she like the mustache? Because I dig it, man. Oh, uh, yeah. she loves it. I, I honestly wouldn't have it if she didn't like it. So she you always tells me. No, she hugs I, me I, up. Don't do that. Keep it's it. fun switching up your facial hair a lot. I know, I know. Doing different stuff. So, um, yeah, let's, so why don't we, we'll have a, we got one more song to play. Why don't we go with the one that's, uh, all the rage this year from afar. So, that's another one getting some love. What can you tell us about that one? Kind of similar with Raspberry Blue. I wrote this one in that extremely transitional period of my life, but, um, it's basically about my relationship with my past self. Uh, uh-huh. questioning, like, will I love that person from afar? And will that person down the road a few months from now love the person I am today? I don't know. Just that relationship with, like, yeah. yourself. But also you can look at it, like, as a love interest um, as far as, like, distance goes. Um, I don't know. You can really think of it however you want to. Yeah, it's a powerful song. <laughs> Very deep thinker. Has, any, has anyone ever told you that? 
I don't know if I'm a deep thinker. I think I'm just very emotionally. You don't I'm think you're a deep, deep thinker? I'm deep with my emotions. I think I'm very. Uh, I don't know. I'll say. I'll, I'll, I'll take the compliment. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, yeah, man. We can't thank you enough for coming on. Did you have fun? Oh, this is super fun. Y'all are super cool. We got to do a, a podcast sometime over at my place. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you'd have to fly your fly your back your ass back. Yeah. Now. So Chris is living out west right now. Is that like a long term thing or just for now? Yeah, hopefully long term. Nice. Oh, yeah. 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 It's not. It's like a mighty uh, thirteen degrees right now. That's fun. Here. I've, yeah, it's yeah, I've I've made a uh, I've made a friend from Hungary. She's uh she says that it's thirteen degrees all the time, and I'm like, is it always <laughs> thirteen? It's always thirteen degrees in Hungary. Because I mean, their thirteen degrees is like I I don't know, like our seventy Celsius though. Yeah. She's saying oh. I was like, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, it just doesn't sound good. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be like, wow, it's thirteen degrees. <laughs> like, oh, I need a I need a light coat, or you know what I mean? Like, I'm hot. Like, it just doesn't. Right. Make right. <laughs> All, All right, right, Parker. I've got one last question for me. Oh, one last question. All yeah. right. What kind of tea are you drinking? I'm a big. Tea oh, you were gonna ask him. If he oh, was, you dude. were gonna ask him if he's a if he's a good lover too. Would you say you're a good lover, Parker? I'm a good lover. I'm a good lover. Oh yeah. So yes, yeah, social sick. Good lover doesn't approve of Andrew Callahan's <laughs> behavior. Loves Absolutely ripping not. solos. Yeah, yeah. Like stage <laughs> stage diving. Yeah. Doesn't have yeah. Group, doesn't have groupies. Well, he does. Just normal fans though. <laughs> great great music blown up dude i hope you get a, is Summerfest like the i mean that'd be sick right that's like the accumulation yeah. of so much that's like a major stepping stone for someone growing up in the mil was you know milwaukee area or wisconsin in general and getting to play at Summerfest. that's a absolutely. good absolutely absolutely yeah it'd be awesome man so really really crossing my fingers for that one. Oh yeah chris did you ask your last question already yeah, you interrupted. I want to know what kind of tea the guy was drinking. It's the uh, uh, Yogi. Um, I think it was actually like I, I don't have the wrapper with me anymore, but it was like positive energy kind of thing. It has caffeine. Yeah. Really I know, good. I know what you're kind of talking about. Yeah, it's well, orange. I know the brand you're talking about. They have very nice looking. They have those. Yeah, those names. <laughs> what you're saying. I know. What, yeah. yeah, I hear you. Like good vibes tea. Well, all right, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for having me. This is sweet. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. Sure. Yeah, what time I, is uh is your show is your show already sold out? No, no, I don't think it will sell out. Sell out, uh, but it'll get maybe pretty close with walk-ins and all that. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe you have I'll check it out. Oh, dude, it's gonna be sweet. Stone Theory is opening up the night. I've only heard good things about them. They're like seventies rock. Um, like apparently there's like a prodigy lead singer, and she like. Just absolutely destroys it. And then Wonderful Bluffer, Milwaukee based, uh, like funk, blues rock, I would say. Um, cool. They absolutely kill it too. So it's gonna be fun. And then we're, we're headlining at like 10. Oh, yeah. No big deal or anything. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna yeah, have good time. Sure. All right. Well, thanks, man. You have a good night. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much for having me again. See you.